so let's get into the worthy mentions. The vehicles. Obviously, I want it to be an open level game. I guess I should start with open levels. I want it to be an open level game, because that's what Ghost Recon's supposed to be. I think it'd be cool if you do a, an open world mode, so that players can goof around with their friends in an open world mode. But the campaign should be open levels. It's basically not even a debate. It's so obvious that it should be open levels. There's really no point in saying anything else. <laughs> but part of being in open levels is that vehicles don't really make sense because you should be getting dropped off at the AO and then you have to stay in the AO otherwise you're going AWOL and you fail the mission or your teammates shoot you dead that sort of thing but uh for the open world mode or if they're stupid enough to do the campaign in open world again then vehicles should be better because they are horrible the driving's horrible. I don't know how it's so bad, really. <laughs> but somehow, the helicopters are even worse than that, and the planes are even worse than the helicopters. It is honestly some of the worst vehicles I've ever experienced, ever. And I've played a lot of games. So the vehicles should be better, if they're going to be in the open world mode or whatever. It should also be a lot more realistic as well. Uh, perspective. I think the obvious thing to do is to go back to the Ghost Recon 2, the Graw and Graw 2 on consoles. Well, at least on the Xbox, where you could choose first person or third person. However, uh, as regarding first person, it should be the true first person, which can be seen in Arma 3 or Ground Branch or, well, Scum doesn't have it anymore. Thief 3 has it, but you should be able to see your body as it exists in the world. If your leg is sticking outside of a fence in the game world, and that's how other players see you, that's how enemies see you, then when you look down at your leg, you should see that your leg is sticking out. You should see exactly what everyone else sees in the world. And, uh, you know, that's related to free look. You should be able to look down, see your body. That's how first person should be, but uh, first person should be in the game. And if you're not going to do true first person, which, I mean, that's just stupid at this point, but... Yeah, you'd be so stupid, so <laughs> if you're not going to have true first person, or you see your body as it exists in the world, then I would like the option to remove the gun. I don't want to see the gun, I don't want to see my hands, I don't want to see anything. I just want to see the world, like in the first Ghost Recon, because if it's not going to be realistic anyhow, then just give me the space, because in the real world I could move my gun, I could get it out of my view, and then look around, and then quickly put it back up. And even if you have the low ready stance or whatever you might do to get around that, I'd rather just have nothing drawn on my screen if it's not going to be the realistic, true first person. I want to see the world. Uh, story and world building also needs to be improved. It needs to be Tom Clancy-esque. World building was okay in Wildlands. You know, they had the enemies had routines, but uh, it wasn't very realistic. When you go to the cities and people are sweeping their houses, they're sweeping their driveways or whatever, their walkways at 3 in the morning and all sorts of other nonsense. It definitely has a lot of room for improvement. But, uh, you know, routines have been in games for a long time. They haven't been used in many games, but they have existed for a long time. And stories have also existed for a long time, and I think Breakpoint did a horrible job at both of those things, and Wildlands, eh, not as bad, but still has plenty of room for improvement. Technology also needs to be better in the sense that uh, instead of unrealistic stuff, like being able to, you know, wear some magical cloak that turns you invisible, it should have stuff like the M157 or whatever the new optic is called, realistic tech prototype technology that the military's working on, that's the sort of thing that belongs in Ghost Recon, not fantasy stuff like drones with infinite ammo and infinite batteries and teleportation and all that other crap. It needs to be realistic, near future, or present day technology. Not that we hope this, this could happen, maybe we'll have magical invisible cloth. It'll make it easier for the gaming journalists to win the game. Although I will say the uh, those 3D cameras or whatever, those Intel grenades, I kind of saw it as multiple cameras on a grenade. Those could be better if they were, if the batteries or whatever, if they lasted longer. And you actually needed to have the, the uh, 
Opscom, what is it called? I think it's Opscom. I don't know, that thing from Ghost Recon, Advanced Warfighter. If you needed to have that for the Intel grenades, that'd be kind of cool, because the weight system, and uh, there would also be a battery system. I didn't mention that in the inventory part, but there's a lot of stuff I didn't mention, because there's a lot of room for improvement in these games. But uh, night vision and thermal vision, fusion goggles, thermal vision uses a lot of battery, whereas night vision doesn't use as much, so you have to balance your battery usage. Intel grenades, opgun, that sort of thing. Whatever. I'm rambling a lot for worthy mentions. No embarrassing banter would be a huge one. There's a lot of stuff that, uh, well, I guess it makes people cringe because it's embarrassing banter. It sounds horrible. It's not immersive at all. You guys never let me drive anymore. One time. I don't know. I hate that stuff. I hate that stuff so much. And, uh, you know. Civilian, danger, close, all that sort of... Ugh, it's so bad. Just do me a favor and only add realistic dialogue, or just make it practical dialogue. Like, calling out enemy. Like, uh... 3 o'clock, 400 meters, two enemies, bearing 253, heading 145. That sort of thing. So customization obviously could be improved. Everyone's already said it, but Ground Branch, they've got the coolest customization, pretty much. Where you can put your scope anywhere, put your lasers anywhere. They've removed a lot of the uh, abilities to throw multiple lasers and stuff on, but uh, there's still cool stuff. But that sort of system, if you could replace barrels and replace magazines, change the lower, change the upper... Change optics, move them around for different, uh, I can't think of what it's called right now, but <laughs> how you see through, uh, the optic. Um, mod support. That's a huge one. There should be mod support in the game. So the first Ghost Recon on PC has mod support. Now consoles have had mod support, so I think it's long past time to add mod support to Ghost Recon again. Let's bring it back. And, uh, at the very least, even if you're not going to throw in mod support, there should be a mission and level editor, because, again, it should be open level campaign, but people should be able to design their own levels, and if it's not going to be something like, uh, I don't know, SimCity, <laughs> where you can change the, you know, you could draw mountains and trees and all that other stuff, if it's not going to be that, it should at least be to the level of Halo Forge, so you choose, you know, a sandbox... You choose level 1 and it's a jungle and then you can add all the different objects in, pre-made buildings and that sort of thing. And then a mission editor so you can create different missions on it like grab this intel, kill this guy, extract this vehicle, blow this building up, whatever, blow this uh, cash up, all that sort of stuff. So that uh, the game has infinite replayability. And related to that, it would also be cool because the game should have a planning phase. Didn't mention that either. When I was talking about micromanagement, I said the comms map or whatever, the tactical map, command map. But I didn't really point out you control your avatars through it. Should look something like Door Kickers 2. But uh, yeah, so after you just set up all those things, the pre-planning, similar to Ghost Streak, or similar to Rainbow Six, you could upload those plans so the plan would be attached to a particular mission on a particular level. People could download it and then play with your plan on that particular level and mission. And they'll have the markers. I prefer Rainbow Six Three's version, which is a translucent marker on the hood. Sort of like a golden arrow thing, except it's, uh, it's uh, located at the position you're supposed to move to, the different waypoints. So you follow people's plans like that instead of on the compass, which is how Ghost Recon 1 did it. That's how it showed your waypoints. But regardless of how it's shown, you should be able to download other players' plans. Because then you really have infinite playability. Because you could do the missions how you want to do them, and then you could see how other people do them and execute their plans, see how well they did it. And another thing that should be improved, the final thing I've written, thank goodness, I've been speaking for a long time, weather and lighting, I guess maybe those should be separate, <laughs> but uh, the weather effects, 
I don't know, they were a lot more memorable in the first Ghost Recon, even now. Going back to the first Ghost Recon, which I do, I would say every month I play some Ghost Recon. Uh, well, Ghost Recon 1, you know, the actual Ghost Recon. Those weather effects just feel so much better than pretty much anything I experienced in Breakpoint or Wildlands. However, the weather effects were kind of cool. They just should be a lot better. And uh, not only should there be better sounds for the weather effects, so you hear the rain hitting tin roof or whatever, the metal of a car or that sort of thing. You hear the wind when you're in a cave going by outside. But uh, should be more dynamic weather. So instead of just a little rain and maybe lightning here and there, they have really bad storms so that you can barely see anything and the enemies are basically deaf because the storm is so loud and maybe most of them are inside because they're all hiding. So that sort of thing, blizzards where you can't see, you know, you can go really far and have a hurricane, etc. Which would be huge for the mission level editor so people could build missions around extreme weather tornadoes, whatnot, but, you know, at least make it more extreme than it has been. And then the lighting. The lighting effects were quite bad in the games. Basically all you get is bloom. I think you get some god rays here and there, but they're kind of weak. And then it has a eye adaptation thing, but it's horribly done, and I don't think the enemies are affected. No, they definitely aren't affected by it, so while you're coming out from a dark er place to a brighter place even though it's not as extreme as the game makes it seem you're blind the enemies can see you just fine they have no problem seeing into buildings or, at least from what I can remember maybe there is something to it but it didn't seem like it they're blind anyhow but when they're alert they're alert and they see you so that sort of eye adaptation should be improved and the lighting in general there's no areas where you see you know, Splinter Cell 1 had better lighting in a lot of ways. I think it'd be very cool to see some golden light reflecting off moss. Whatever, it doesn't need to be path tracing, but just hitting the moss. The moss turns a little bit yellow. Yeah, that sort of thing. Whatever, I'm done. I just spoke for a long time. Nobody's gonna watch this. This is gonna have to be like 20 videos. <laughs> It's gonna be 10 videos, I guess. That's what I should do. Uh, I guess it would have to be more than 10. Because the worthy mentions, maybe I could cram those all into one long video. I'm done. Thanks for watching. To the one person who actually watched any of these, let alone finished them. You're a champion. We can save Ghost Recon. No, we can't. Ubisoft's trash. <laughs> Peace.